Tobe is an average school boy who is not good at studying, but is addicted to computer games. He and his friends even keep playing video games in the middle of the class. He wins money from games and helps himself with it. He takes a credit card from their old butler and connects it with his game when he wins a lot of money. He takes this money and goes to buy himself a brand new car. When he brings the car to his school, he gets called to the office. His teacher wants to call his parents, but he says that instead of calling his parents, they can cut his merits, to which his teacher says that he doesn't even have enough merits. He doesn't accept his defeat and says that he will pay for the new neon sign school, but his teacher says that he cannot bribe the school, and he gets very upset with Tobe, saying that why can't he be like his siblings and graduate like a good student? His teacher says that he is worried about how he is going to make a living for himself and lets him go after a little more scolding. When he comes back outside, all the students are gathered around his car, looking at it in amazement. He ignores them and takes his girlfriend with him and buys her food while they drive around the town in a new car. He comes home very late, parks the car outside, and asks his butler to bring it inside while he tries to sneak in without waking his parents. Butler doesn't know much about cars and accidentally set the alarm, startling him. When he goes inside, his parents are waiting for him near the stairs. His dad scolds him for coming home this late and also for buying a car. He says that if Tobe continues to waste money like that, they will go bankrupt soon. Tobe says that it was his money that he earned from online gaming, but his dad says that he should study seriously or be ready for consequences and goes away. His mother says to him that they only want him to study properly and says that he should not worry them too much. She also goes away. His gaming addiction didn't stop over the years, and it is time for him to go to university. He doesn't get accepted in most public universities. He still doesn't get serious and goes to buy a PlayStation and a DVD player to continue gaming. When he gets back home after buying it, his parents are there. They ask him about his university admission, he says that he got accepted into a private university, and it is not even that expensive. His father says that he should go to community college because he is not going to study and they will not waste money on him. Tobe says that he has money, and he will pay for himself. His mother goes after his father and tries to convince him to let Tobe go to a private university. While his parents argue, he goes to his room to play video games, only to discover that his account has been deleted. He goes to the electronic shop again and buys many DVDs at a discount. When he goes home and tries to show DVD players to his parents, one of them breaks before he even sells one or uses it. The shopkeeper says that the DVDs have no warranty or exchange policy, that's why they are so cheap, and Tobe should have known it as it is common knowledge, and he asks him to throw it all away. In his anger, he breaks a mirror table in the shop. The shopkeeper slaps him, but he runs away before he gets more beaten up. On his way back home, he offers his father a ride home. His father tells him that doing business is no joke, he says that it is how life works. He gives some money to Tobe, so he can study anywhere he wants, but when Tobe says that he is not one of his employees, his father takes the money back. He takes his dad's amulet from his house, puts it on pawn in a shop, and takes a hundred thousand as a return. He goes to school with that money. In school, he doesn't get very serious again and keeps skipping classes. He goes to the auditorium and sees his girlfriend and other people practicing for a drama. She comes to him after rehearsal, but refuses to go out with him as she has her classes and later rehearsal for her drama. He goes to a market where there are different kinds of machines being sold and there is free food to try the food the machines are making. He interestingly listens to a person explaining the qualities of chestnut making machines, he says that it is the first one in the whole country and they have imported it from Japan. Tobe takes great interest in it and buys it even though it was expensive, saying that as he will be the first one to have it, it will be great for him. When he comes back home, his father gets angry, and says that he can buy it much cheaper at weekend markets than the money Tobe just rented it for. The next day after school, he goes to an old man selling chestnuts and asks him about the process and all the techniques for chestnuts. He continues his research and goes to different people to gather information. He applies all these techniques at home, trying to make the best chestnuts. When he makes his first badge, he makes his butler try it. Then he goes to his mother, who says that it is very delicious. When his father is in the meeting with a friend, they keep eating chestnuts. His friend asks where he gets them from because they are delicious, and he says that Tobe is roasting them and his friend says that his son is very hardworking. In a mall, he buys a spot to set up his chestnut stand. There are a lot of other shops near that corner selling different kinds of eatables. He and his butler Twong work together on the first day. Tobe asks, why they sell so little. The old man says that he cannot yell as loudly as another seller because he is not that energetic anymore. 
Tobe says that they have to sell it, and for that, they have been loud and repetitive. They kept their voices loud this time, calling people over with their voices and hand signals. He goes to a local market for clothes, and there he meets his girlfriend, and they talk for a while. When she tells him that she doesn't get paid for her acting, he gets pissed and says that this is unfair. When he is talking to her, he gets a phone call from his butler. The old man tells him that business is not good today and all the other shops are packed around them. When he comes back, she gets suspicious and asks him whom he was talking to, but he says that it was only Twong and she doesn't have to worry about anything. Tobe sees people getting donations and gets an idea from that. Tobe comes back and asks to move his stall, but they refuse to say that he cannot move it. He tries to say that he will leave it, but they say that he can leave but he will get no refund because it was written in the contract. The manager says that after the end of the month there will be a free spot, and if he wants to move there, he will have to sign the contract now. The manager says that it is a prime location and he will earn his rental back in no time. Tobe is in the class taking his exam when his phone keeps ringing in his back. At first, he doesn't pay it any mind, but after a while, he stands up and takes out his phone. His teacher says that if he picks up his phone, she will report him for cheating. He thinks for a while and then takes his bag and phone and walks out of the classroom. After listening to the call, he quickly comes to the mall with a bag of chestnuts and is very happy to see a lot of people in his stall on their first day. He says to the old man that they should open more branches, but he says to slow down. But Tobe is determined, and he opens another stall soon. At his new branch, his girlfriend meets him and says that they aren't dating anymore because she doesn't know anything about him and someone else told her about his business. She says that she is worried about his future. He calls his friend, who told her, but his friend says that she was thinking Tobe was cheating on her, so that's why he has to tell her. At the mall, the manager says that his stall is causing damage because the smoke is turning the ceiling yellow, and if he doesn't have any way to fix it they will have to cancel his contract. Tobe says that he will fix it. He, with the help of old man Tuong, paints the ceiling himself. They ask him to paint after the mall closes, so the customers are not disturbed. At night, he paints the ceiling with the help of his mother. He is left with a little portion when security comes and asks him to leave because his time is over. Tobe asks for little time but no use, and he gives little money to the security guard, but the officer returns his money and asks his mother to discipline her son by asking them to leave with all their belongings. His mother says that he should apply for a passport tomorrow, but he is determined to fix the problem and says that he has time and will fix this in the morning. But his mother says that they are moving to China at the end for his siblings because they are in a lot of debt. He gets very angry and says that he doesn't know anything about this when he is part of the family. He angrily asks his mother about how much debt they are in. He says that his chestnut business is doing well and he can pay their debt. His mother just keeps crying and tells him to come with them so they can be together at least. When he is getting his pictures taken at the passport office, he gets out in the middle and says to his parents that he will live here and study. He says to his father that he is ready to be his employee, so he can give him money now to study. His parents go to China without him. At the airport, his father advises him to leave chestnuts and go to school. He comes back to the mall the next morning to complete painting the ceiling. But the manager says that they cannot let him keep his stalls, and he has to take every branch out. He is laying in his house side when he sees some ladies reading something on his door when he goes out and sees what is it, he is disappointed to see that it is a bankruptcy notice from the court. He takes it from the door and throws it in the trash can. He meets his girlfriend when he is roaming in the market. He quickly hugs her and starts crying. She says that he should leave the chestnut business and go to school, and she will help him. He agrees with her. They sit in the car and eat fried seaweed that she had brought from her house. From there, he gets the idea to try seaweeds as his next venture. He goes to the bank to apply for a loan. At first, the person says that he cannot get a loan because they already have a lot of loan applications. But when he begs to hear his story, the manager says that he only has one chance to convince him. Tobe tells the man his whole story. He even shows the scar that he got from trying to fry seaweed. He tells the man further that he brought a lot of seaweed but, unfortunately, it went stale. He says that he went to a food and nutrition university, told his story there, and got some useful information like vacuum packing to avoid stalling from there. After coming back from the bank, he buys a lot of seaweed, and he and Tuong start frying it to find the best condition. He continues his story further. Tuong checks the seaweed and tries again and again with different techniques to get the perfect seaweed. Tuong says that they need to buy more seaweed as they are not quite there yet. Tobe promises to buy more and sells his computers and other old gadgets to do so. 
Tuang is discouraged and says he doesn't want to do it anymore because they've already squandered so much money, but Tobe says they can't give up and that once they get it right, they'll make the money back in no time. He gets a call from his girlfriend reminding him that it is their last day of registration. As a result, he arrives on time and registers for his classes. He comes back at night with the boxes of seaweed when it is raining outside. He calls Tuang to ask him to fry more seaweed but gets no response. When he goes back to search for Tuang, he finds him lying there, unconscious and bleeding from the head. Tobe brings his uncle to the hospital and sits in the waiting area holding a packet and waiting for any news. Luckily, Tuang is fine and will be discharged in a few days. He makes Tuang check the seaweeds he fried. Luckily, he says that this time they are good enough and they can sell them. They started their business again and started selling seaweed, which surprisingly started on a good note. Tobe's mother calls him to say happy birthday to him, she says that his father wants to talk to him. His father says that he should study hard so they can call him to China next semester. He says that he already bought his tickets and will send them to him. Tobe forces his father to tell him the truth about debt. His father hesitates at first but finally tells. On top of that, they have to pay 40 million, leaving him in total shock. When he comes back, he finds another notice on his house. He doesn't know what else to do and keeps wandering in the neighborhood sadly. All the time, he is listening to different speakers on the radio but doesn't get any useful information. Finally, he finds out about a company called 7-Eleven that buys and sells products all over the country. He goes there with his seaweed and waits for his name to be called. He even practiced his speech in the bathroom. But he forgets to give his name at reception. When the director comes, she tells him to leave his product as she will have to go into the meeting in 10 minutes. He says that 10 minutes are fine, but he wants to present his product. But unfortunately, the director doesn't like his product, saying that it has several faults and is even expensive for them. But before she goes away, she tells him that most selling starts in urban areas and then moves to big cities. When he gets back, his girlfriend is waiting for him. She asks why he doesn't say anything to her and says she will help him with anything. But he gets angry and fights with her. He leaves his girlfriend standing outside and locks the door after going inside. He goes inside and lays with Tuang, he starts crying, saying that he is a jerk as he fights with his girlfriend while she was just trying to help. Tuang says that he should not get disappointed and that everything will be fine soon. In the morning, he goes and gets his packages redesigned. He goes to the 7-Eleven again but can't meet the director even after waiting for a whole day. He gets very disappointed and gives all his seaweed to a security guard on his way back. Outside the company, he sits at a bus stop and calls his mom. He says that nothing is working for him and his product keeps getting rejected. In the company, his seaweed is spread all around the office, and everyone likes it very much. Soon he gets called by the company, he is ecstatic to know that his product is approved. They said that he would have to deliver his product to their 3,000 branches. The director instructs him on how to complete his delivery and says that his product will be delivered after he passes the GMP inspection. He needs a lot of money to complete his first order. At the bank, they still refuse to give him a loan because he is so young. He sells his car and gets some money from that. But he couldn't get the supplies because they wanted more money soon. He is worried that they may not succeed this time, but Tuang says nobody knows what will happen next and they should not lose hope. They rent a shop and prepare it to set up a seaweed shop. Soon they will have a GMP inspection. His uncle says that he can bribe them, but Tobbs wants to do it properly this time. They have some complaints about cleanliness, but they don't make any decisions immediately and say that they will fax him their decision later. He will fix all the problems in the factory soon. When he gets the fax, he is ecstatic to know that they have passed the inspection. When they deliver packages for the first time, Tobe is very afraid, but Tuang assures him that everything will be fine. Even though they are an hour late, after so much begging, they let him deliver his packages. Two years later, he has paid his parents' debt and now lives with them in their old house. His business is expanding all over the world, and he is now the youngest billionaire in the world. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit the like button if you haven't done it yet. See you next time.